sit down and I'll tell you a story. I shot my husband, Richard, 25 years ago, right here in Mammoth Lakes, California. It's the first homicide in 12 years in this peaceful little town and the only one for 13 years after that. A justifiable killing, in my opinion, but not in the judges. I shot five times. The prosecutor argued that I didn't fire the sixth cartridge because I'd planned to use it on myself, which by some loopy legal reasoning meant that I was some, I was sane and knew what I was doing. The lawyer badly wanted me sane because he was out for blood, and they can't spill crazy blood. Only the healthy stuff. But he couldn't prove a plan. I never considered using the sixth shot on myself. Not once. I told them so. That's all behind me now as much as anything is ever behind anybody. The past not being even past and all that, especially if you have children, which I do. Life's three great labors are to see what you've done, face the consequences, and adjust. People get stuck on those. They will not look their acts straight in the eye. They will not accept what they have coming. They will not change direction. I publish a weekly newspaper here in town, The Wooly. Wooly as our town mascot, a wooly mammoth, of course. I was a part-time winter sports drinker when I was young. Even after all these years, I still get a little thrill every time I see my byline. Story by Cynthia Carson. This current work doesn't pay much, but the investigations and interviews and writing and photography, editing and layout, mostly electronic now, done right here on my red laptop, but me exactly, put me exactly where I want to be in the real world which being in the real world is another thing that people have trouble with. They spend their whole lives trapped inside their own heads. I finished writing this week's edition of the Wooly. I've got the coffee poured and waiting. It's two degrees outside, but that's a strong fire in the stove, and I'm going to sit close by the fire and edit my articles, then proofread and make them perfect before I put the paper into bed. That's what we used to say years ago at the Mammoth Times, put it to bed which meant get it to the print shop. Always on Wednesday so we could circulate early Thursday. Now I just push a key or two and the printer starts to whir. This is my favorite time of the week when I get my last look at what I'm about to publish, when I can change things to make my stories right, when I can think about what's going on in town lately. This week, my lead story is about the wave of ski and snowboard thefts. Already up 300% this winter, season over the last one and it's only january the thieves are hitting all three mammoth mountain lodges blending with the crowds walking off with rarely locked and often unattended eyes and items as if they owned them he she they have a keen eye for quality they do not take the cheap gear or the bent up rentals last week stolen ski boards and had a combined retail value of nearly eleven thousand dollars the fact that six stolen pairs of skis and eight stolen snowboards are my lead story just gives you some idea of what this town is usually like. A quiet village most days. A bit of Eden hanging out to a dome of volcanic rock 10,000 feet in the air. I actually had to go to the Mammoth Lake Police Department to get these stolen property stats for the Wooly. Not easy for me to do, me to do after the unhappy hours I spent there, as you might imagine. They were courteous. I taught one of the sergeants to ski 40 years ago when I was 15, the year I was number one on the Mammoth Girls Junior Downhill Ski Team. I advised a detective to keep an eye on the internet to find those skis and boards. Range by, and you've got the criminals. He seemed to like that idea.